Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. There's just over a week to go to your GCSE Maths paper, so keep up the hard work, you're doing fantastically well. Now today we're going to be looking at the topic of equations. We're going to look at some harder equations, so equations that might involve quadratics and things like that. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at equations, and we're going to be looking at equations that involve algebraic fractions. Now, we looked at algebraic fractions earlier, I think with about, was it 15, 17, something like that days ago, and we looked at how to add algebraic fractions and things like that. Um, so in this video, what I want you to do is I want you to, I'm going to put up a question, I want you to press pause, and I want you to try the question yourself, and then I'll then go through it, and just you can check in and see if you've got it right or not. Um, later on, with our last example, it involves using a quadratic formula, so also we've looked at that as well, so hopefully you'll be able to tackle that one yourself as well. So here we've got our first question it says solve x plus 5 over 3 plus x plus 1 over 2 equals 8 so feel free to press pause and try this question now okay so in terms of our left hand side here let's add together these algebraic fractions so we want to get a common denominator so i'm going to choose 6 and 6 and then that's still a plus sign so to get from 3 to 6 we multiply by 2 so we're going to need to multiply everything on the numerator by 2 so that'll be 2x plus 10 and then our other fraction well we had 2 we've now got a 6 so we've multiplied by 3 we've multiplied the denominator by 3 so we need to multiply the numerator by 3 so that's going to be 3x plus 3 and it's still equal to 8 now the left hand side here when we simplify this 2x plus 3x is 5x and then we've got 10 plus 3 is equal to 13 and we've just added those together because we've got the same denominator and now it's still over 6 and that's equal to 8. Okay now this point here but we want to find out what x is so let's get rid of this divide by 6. So let's multiply both sides of our equation by 6. So we're multiplying by 6 to get rid of the divide by 6 so we'll just be left with 5x plus 13 and on the right hand side we had 8 times 6 is equal to 48. Now we want to solve this. I'm just going to go back up here. 5x plus 13 is equal to 48. So let's take away 13 and take away 13. And we get that 5x is equal to 35. And divide by 5 and divide by 5. And we're going to get that x is equal to 7. So x equal to 7. Let's just check that. 7 plus 5 is equal to 12. Divided by 3 is equal to 4. And here you've got 7 plus 1 is equal to 8. Divided by 2, 2 is equal to 4. And 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. So yeah, that works. And we, we answered it. And if you got that, well done. Okay. Okay, so let's have a look at our second equation. So our second equation is 2x plus 3 over 5 plus x minus 1 over 10 equals 5 quarters. So feel free to press pause now and try this question. Okay, so in terms of simplifying our left-hand side, we want to add together these fractions. So we want the same denominator, so I'm thinking 10 and 10. So 10 and then 10. Well, this is actually a fraction that's the same, so it'll be x minus 1 on the numerator, and that still equals 5 quarters. Now, to get from 5 to 10, we multiply by 2, so we need to double or multiply by 2 the numerator, so it's going to be 4x plus 6, so 4x plus 6. Now, both our fractions have got 10 on the denominator, now we can add them. So 4x plus x would be 5x, and then we've got 6 plus minus 1, so it's going to be 6 take away 1, which is 5, so plus 5, and then over 10, and that's equal to 5 quarters. Okay, so we now want to solve this equation. There's a few different approaches we could use here. One approach is to multiply both sides by 10 and to get 5x plus 5 equals 50 quarters. And then we can then take away 5 and then divide by 5 and so on. That's one approach. Another approach would be to change this 5 quarters into a decimal, 1.25, and then times by 10 and take away 5 and work that way. Another way is to use cross multiplication. If you've got a fraction equals a fraction, the numerator times the opposite denominator will be equal to the numerator times the opposite denominator. And that would make sense because if we wanted to get rid of these fractions if we want to get rid of this divide by 10 we'd multiply both sides by 10 and if we wanted to get rid of this divide by 4 we'd multiply both sides by 4 and so then you just end up with this multiplied by 4 and this multiplied by 10 so if we do that this times 4 would be 20x plus 20 and on the right hand side 5 times 10 is 50 so we've just multiplied this numerator by this denominator and this numerator by this denominator and put them equal to each other or as i said you could approach it in other ways if you wanted to but that's just how i would approach it okay next we want to find out what x is so let's take away 20 and take away 20 and we're going to get 20x equals 30 and then divide by 20 and divide by 20 and we're going to get the x is equal to 1.5 so x is equal to 1.5 and that's it and if you got that well done Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got 2 over x plus 4 plus 1 over x plus 2 equals 1. So we want to solve this equation. So feel free to press pause now and solve this equation. Okay, so let's solve this equation. So let's start with this left-hand side and let's add these two algebraic fractions. So let's multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 2 and the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 4. So let's do that. So multiplying both of these by x plus 2 would give us 2 bracket x plus 2 and then over 
x plus 4 bracket x plus 2. That's what we get if we multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 2. Now let's multiply both of these by x plus 4. So 1 times x plus 4 would just be x plus 4, and that'll be over. Then we could write x plus 2 and then brackets x plus 4, but I'm going to write it the other way around x plus 4 bracket x plus 2, just so it matches our other fraction. And that still equals 1, so it equals 1. Okay, so we've now got fractions with the same denominators, so we can just add the numerators. Actually here, let's expand our numerator here, so that'll be 2x plus 4 over, and then x plus 4 bracket x plus 2. And then here we've still got x plus 4, and then over x plus 4, x plus 2. And then that equals 1. So we've just expanded our brackets there. Now let's add the numerators and see what we get. So 2x plus x is 3x, and then 4 plus 4 is equal to 8, so plus 8. And then our denominator is still then x plus 4 bracket x plus 2, and that equals 1. Okay, so now we just want to solve this equation. Now, with this equation, we've got x's on the numerator and denominator, so I don't want to have these x's on the denominator here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by x plus 4, x plus 2. And if I do that on the left-hand side, I'm multiplying by x plus 4, x plus 2 to get rid of it on the denominator, so just be left with 3x plus 1. And on this side, I had a 1, I'm multiplying it by x plus 4 and x plus 2, so that'll be x plus 4 and x plus 2. Or another way to think of it is if you got this fraction, you got the numerator divided by the denominator is equal to 1, the numerator must be equal to the denominator, so we just put them equal to each other, or we just multiply both sides by this denominator. Okay, now we want to solve this, so let's expand our brackets and bring all the x's over to one side. So let's expand our brackets to begin with. So expanding our brackets would be x times x is x squared, x times 2 would be plus 2x, 4 times x would be plus 4x, and 4 times 2 would be plus 8. And then let's simplify this. So then we'd have 3x plus 8 equals x squared. We've got 2x plus 4x, that's plus 6x, and then we've got plus 8. So that's what we get on the right-hand side. Now we want it to equal 0, so let's take away 3x from both sides and take away 8 from both sides, so we'd be left with 0 on the left-hand side. And if we take away 3x's from this side, we'd be left with x squared plus 3x. And we're taking away 8 as well, so then actually that just leaves us with our 3x. So we've got 0 equals x squared plus 3x, just taking away 3x and 8 from both sides there. So we've got 0 equals x squared plus 3x. So let's factorise this right-hand side. So we'd have x and then in brackets x plus 3 close brackets. Now we want to solve this, so either this or this equals 0, so that means that either x equals 0 or x equals minus 3. And there are two solutions, x equals 0 or x equals minus 3, and that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. Our last question says, solve this equation, giving your answers to two decimal places. So as you can tell, so this is probably one we're going to be using the quadratic formula. And so we've got 1 over 2x minus 1 plus 2 over x plus 5 equals 1. So feel free to press pause and to solve this now. Okay, so let's start off with this left-hand side. So we want to add these fractions together. So let's, let's multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 5, and both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 2x minus 1. So this one, if we multiply both of these by x plus 5, we're going to get x plus 5 on the numerator, and then the denominator will be 2x minus 1 x plus 5, just multiplying both of those by x plus 5. Then this fraction, we're going to multiply both of these by 2x minus 1. So 2 times 2x minus 1 will be 2 bracket 2x minus 1, like so. And then the denominator will be x plus 5, 2x minus 1, but I'm going to write it the same way around as this one, so 2x minus 1, x plus 5. And that still equals 1. Okay, so we've just multiplied both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 5, and both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 2x minus 1. Now let's expand our numerators and simplify, so let's see what we get. So we've got x plus 5, so let's expand our brackets on the numerator here, so it's going to be 4x minus 2. Okay, now let's add together our numerators. So x plus 4x is 5x, and then we've got 5 plus minus 2, so that'll be plus 3, and then the denominator will still be 2x minus 1, x plus 5 close brackets, and that equals 1. Okay, so now we want to find out what x is, so we don't want this to be on the denominator, these x's on the denominator here, so we're going to multiply both sides by 2x minus 1, x plus 5, so that will give us 5x plus 3 on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, 2x minus 1, x plus 5. Or another way to think of it is that the numerator divided by the denominator is equal to 1, so they must be equal to each other. Okay, now let's expand our brackets, so let's see what we get when we expand these brackets. So we've got our 5x plus 3 on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, 2x times x would be 2x squared. 2x times 5 would be plus 10x. Minus 1 times x would be minus x, and minus 1 times 5 would be minus 5. 
So we've got 5x plus 3 equals 2x squared. 10x take away an x would be plus 9x minus 5. Now we want this to equal 0, so let's take away 5x from both sides. So we've got 3 equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 5. Now let's take away our 3, so we've got 2x squared plus 4x minus 8. That's fantastic. We've now got a quadratic equal zero. And actually, if we look at it, we can actually divide everything through by two. So if we divide everything by two here, we get zero equals x squared plus two x minus four. Now, at this point, normally I would try to factorize it and find out the values for x. But in this question, it says to give answers to two decimal places. So I'm thinking at this point, I can just jump to using the quadratic formula. So we've got the quadratic formula. And I'm just going to change color of ink here just so that you can see what we're doing here. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now, remember, that's given to you. And we've got a is equal to 1. And we've got b is equal to 2, and we've got c is equal to minus 4, so c is equal to minus 4. So there are values for a, b, and c. Now, we could have used 2, 4, minus 8, and that would give you the same answers. But in this question, I've just divided by 2. Because it equals 0, I could divide the whole equation through by 2. So now let's use a quadratic formula. So x equals x equals minus b, so it's going to be minus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 2 squared is 4, minus, and then I like to put this bit in brackets, 4ac, so it's 4 times 1 times minus 4, 1 times minus 4, close brackets. And that's all divided by 2a, so that's all divided by 2. Okay, now let's work out what's under the square root. So we've got x equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of. We've got 4, and then under in our bracket here, we've got 4 times 1 times minus 4. 4 times 1 is 4, times minus 4 is minus 16, so minus 16, close brackets, all divided by 2. Now, x equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus minus 16. 4 plus 16 is 20, so that's 20, all divided by 2. And this is great, we're now getting there. Okay, so we've now got that x is equal to minus 2 plus the square root of 20 divided by 2, or x equals minus 2 minus the square root of 20 divided by 2. And we just need to work this out, and then there'll be our solution. So let's get our calculator and work them out. So whenever we work out this one, we get that x is equal to 1.23606797. And this one, or x equals, if we work out this one, we get that's equal to minus 3.23606796769 and so on. Now the question says to give our answers to two decimal places, so that means either x equals 1.24 or x equals minus 3.24. And that's it, and if you got those, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at formula and solving equations, and we've looked at some harder equations. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, there's just over a week to go to your first GCSE maths paper, so keep up the hard work. Also remember to be, at this point, whenever you're doing your revision, to be just mindful of you're getting enough sleep. Because you've got your exams and you've got all different papers coming up, don't do revise really, really late at night. I sometimes find at this time of year that my website's really busy at 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, but I would sort of maybe recommend that you do your revision a bit earlier and then you do get a good night's sleep. So keep up the hard work, try and keep yourself rested, but obviously just that big final pushing you do really well. I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Cheers. Bye.